right, y'all. Strap up and strap on. Take a look at some Kiriko gameplay. We actually got uh, just got done looking at some Kiriko gameplay. Okay, that's the floor. You might want to shoot at some enemies. <laughs> I like the angle that we're taking here. Just got to be aware of our team a little bit. That was nice. I like that angle. No, that was nice. Jumped, force out uh, from the hog pressure on you. It's good stuff. Careful about jumping in. I like that you're not jumping into that. That's perfect. Throwing the cleanse. Playing it nice and safe. Trying to pressure out that tracer. Our Cassidy goes down. Our Moira goes down. All right, we fall apart. Yeah, not much you can do there. Um, it's I like that you were taking that cross angle and that you were pressuring. We could have done a little bit more of that, honestly. Um, I think that we were trying to out sustain that pressure that the enemy team had, and we weren't really doing much as a team against it. Um, especially with the hog, it's gonna be hard for that ramp. So it's okay to play a little bit more aggressive, get some more pressure on people. Cool. Yeah, I let, especially with the Moira and the Cassidy you're playing over there. I wouldn't really worry about them too much. Just kind of focus. You guys are looking like a split approach here. So it's all right to have, have your head on a swivel, but especially if you have another support there, they're not getting actively pressured. It's okay to like keep keep healing like your little portion and then damage. Right out. Cleanse a little early. Careful that. Aggressive jump here. Katsune's out. I like that you climb up to avoid it. It's really nice. Sorry, chat. It's like super loud. Yeah, using that wall climb, especially in like pinches like that, it's okay to get a little bit more verticality. I love that you did that. And it kind of throws people off when they're trying to track you. They never really expect the wall climb. I see it happen so much. So if you're in a pinch, like in like, they're like trying to track you, they're right in your face. It's okay. All right. Strange. Probably didn't need that cleanse. You already had a support there. I love that you're using your wall climb though to get that verticality. It's really nice. Yeah, good movement so far. Good survivability. I've been, I've been noticing quite a bit. Um, Right now, it looks like our team's just kind of getting walked over, mainly because the composition they're running. Um, you guys are running a ram without really any speed, and he doesn't really have anything to walk on. So you're just getting poked out. Your team's just getting poked out right now. Not much you can do about that as far as your survivability. Pretty good. That's what I'm kind of saying is that you can you can poke a little bit more. I'm, I'm noticing, and you're probably noticing, that they're not really doing anything. Your team's not really pushing up into anything. So they're you're, they're basically trying to out poke the team that probably has better poke. Like the Tracer Sombra taking the off angle, Hog going for the poke, Moira in the back line are probably just right clicking people that pressure them. So if your team's not gonna push in, you have to help in whatever way you can to help win that poke war in that situation. So it's okay if they're sustained for the most part, no one's like super critical. You can get a little bit more DPS -y on Kiriko in those situations. So. Uh, switch to the Moira here. We've got uh, Malga, which might be uh, might be okay against the Hawk. We'll see how he plays it here. You can really play either aggressive or pokey with the uh, Malga on a Hawk. Just depends on how everything works out. So, so now that we've noticed that we've already figured out that the Tracer and the Sombra are kind of working together. So we're kind of we're gonna always kind of want to be near somebody else for the most part. Because all they're going to do is wait to see if somebody's by themselves and they're going to dive them. So spotting opportunities like that, kind of collecting information as you play on where you need to play and position. So even though even though our Malga is up front, he's probably not going to be taking as much damage because the Tracer and the Sombra are going to be in the back line. So it's okay to kind of ease back on your Malga a little bit. You don't have to hard pocket him. I love this. Yeah, kind of just chill near your Torp here and deny those flankers. If you can deny flankers, you're basically denying that DPS completely. 
So this is great. We're definitely, yeah, we're going to be seeing this like that uh, all the time. Like this is all they're going to be doing. Matching the coalescence, not too bad, especially with five. It's gonna be an econ match here. We got him where we want him. Pops the Malgal. You throw in a damage orb. Denies the MP, which is huge. Wow, he's hanging on by a thread. Yeah, we're kind of just healing almost down here. Huge. So, this is gonna be pretty good. Um, if you guys keep the Reaper here and like like what you guys will really want to do is play stacked um now that they're on the bastion probably not as much because tracer is not going to have much to dive with her um on the other team so i'm like i'm like kind of giving you ideas about what to think about as you're playing this so like tracer by yourself might still be able to pick off people but most of it's going to be frontline pressure so you're going to want to play a little bit closer to your tank now so just got to be aware of that tracer now a little bit but mainly making sure that your Malga stays up here for the, the Bastion damage. A lot of poke here. So it's the hook coming out. Like there are pressure in the Tracer, just enough to get her away. Remember, we don't have to kill her. We just got to let her know that she can't really fight there. You know? Yeah, she's eating you guys up. Yeah, she's eating you guys up fierce right now. Reaper goes in, gets the pick. Tracer. Gets the limb. Um, I think they capped that. So not too bad. I'm surprised you guys are actually able to hold that for that long. That was pretty big. Um, again, I do like the Moira pick for the tracer. Um, it's just gonna be a little bit different now with the uh, Bastion. Okay. Really cannot keep it. Oh my god, a massive tire, dude. Jesus Christ. Damn, that's a that's a junkrat player right there, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> that's crazy. Nice. Huge. Really good stuff. Yeah, and I think you guys just clean this up here, right? They're not giving it up. Good fade. Oh, might need to kill some stuff. Oh man, we're just we're not focusing anything. Nothing's dying. We're giving him a full regroup. Oh buddy. Still winnable. Damn, they're gonna eat us up, aren't they? I hear a minor problem with Fair right now is that Mercy has a hard time keeping up. That's why I think I think that was the what they were intending to do though. I think they didn't want Fair to play with Mercy, which is kind of great. When I read the patch notes on that, that's kind of what I took from it. Is that uh that was a very aggressive fade, by the way. Surrender to my will. I couldn't tell if that was used to touch or not. I was distracted. It's almost a nerf in a way. Oh, Mercy sucks right now, dude. Yeah, from what I can tell, Mercy is like a terrible, terrible pick right now. For Farrah too? I don't know. I've seen Farrah play quite a bit. She seems pretty okay. The extra uh, explosion radius seems pretty decent. Seems like it's much easier to get value with your uh, rockets now. All right, moving on to round three. Still rocking the Moira, which is good for the DPS can, uh, contest here. Okay, not a bad fade, just to reposition. Probably didn't need to push in that hard. Should have maximized your distance. Again, you don't really want to catch yourself in these uh, positions where you're having to force your fade to reposition. You're going to want that fade to get out when they pressure you. So careful about using that fade too aggressively, like we're doing right here.
See what I mean? Like it's we're we're doing it quite a bit, and this is gonna bite you in the ass as a Moira player quite often. Um, we're not seeing it yet, but it, it will. Careful about using your fade to reposition so often. You're gonna get in a bad habit of it, and then you're gonna not have it when they pressure you. The moment you get pressured, you always want to have that fade ready to go. Good job helping the Reaper here. Looks good. Like that, I love this positioning here. Using the corner, not over committing into like the kill boxes here. Always have somewhere to fall back to if you get pressured. Canceled by the MP. Nothing wrong with that, I'd say that's a good trade. This is good. This is what I'm talking about playing, playing positioning really well. Focusing on your sight lines. Whatever you're like, a really important thing for a lot of players, depending on what uh, role you're playing, is to make sure that you're isolating whatever you're focusing on as your LOS. You don't want to expose yourself to a bunch of random stuff that you're not even like pressuring or healing um, if you don't need to. That's why we always say play corners, rotate around those corners as your team push up so you can keep that LOS. But if you're not actively pressuring somebody or healing something, you don't need to have LOS of that person. Um, unless you have some ability that you'll need for it, like life weaver grip or uh, uh, cleanse or something. Um, but as far as like enemies go, a really good habit to get into is that only only have the person in LOS, the person that you can see is the person you're pressuring. If you have other sight lines that people can shoot you from, you're gonna be taking that random damage and it's gonna force out your abilities way quicker. So this is what I kind of mean is like rotating in a way where you can play corners, you're not taking damage and you can focus on what you're doing at the moment. For example, you rotated to the left, you started healing your tank, and then if you wanted to push up a little bit more and pressure somebody with your right click, you could walk around that corner and see if there's anybody in that cell line, just pressure that person um, uh, like that. So you're not taking a bunch of random damage. You don't have to commit 100% to that open space where you're gonna have to fade to get out. So see, this this rotation is kind of just kind of all over the place right now. <laughs> it's good pressure on Sombra though. Love that you're listening for that. That helps you out your tank a lot. So I think that was a smart move, not healing and instead pressuring. Even though he died, that was probably the, the right move to do there. Because the Sombra would have just beamed him down at that point. So that was really, really smart. Good cleanse and a good fade. Pulse out now. 90 to Coalescence. Probably just going to want to build that up as quickly as you can. We're coming up to our last fight. So that's going to be kind of your goal, which I, I kind of see you doing right now. Build up that coal. And then the moment you guys start that engagement, I would be playing with your tank here. Unless that Reaper's, unless you're playing on coaling that Reaper ult. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably pop it. Yeah, you saw him going in for that. Thank you. There you go. Don't be afraid to use that fade when you get it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nice. Good healing orb. Always keep yourself alive first. Good rotation here. Love it. We're pushing in. I don't think we need to be pushing in here. We faded in. There you go. Faded to nowhere again. Yeah, that's Sombra. That's Sombra wants you dead, dude. Good cap, though. Or, sorry, not good cap. They won. Um, yeah, I, I'd probably say there was a lot of good stuff I saw from the Moira gameplay and the Kiri gameplay. What I noticed the most on Moira, though, is that your fade, dude, you don't think about your fade. You are using fade so often for no reason. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some good... There's some ones that were, were fine, like, for your rotations and stuff that were pretty good. Um, but, for example, like, when you're in the middle of the fight and you get pressured and you, you fade a little bit to the left just to give yourself a second of not taking damage and then you walk literally right back to where you were that's what i mean by like if you're going to use fade to rotate from the pressure use fade to rotate from the pressure you know instead of rotating 
back and then going back in how about you fade to the steps that were behind you and then you can play the cover there throw a healing or remember you're trying to keep yourself alive first maybe fade back to where you were fading before uh to main so you can play that corner back there i just kind of see you wasting it and moira moira is definitely not like a super complicated hero but fade using that properly is probably going to be one of the most important things for moira players um yeah and i was going to say sauce is probably a really good person to talk about this how important fade is and being down fade is is crucial to staying alive as moira on like how where you have it and how aggressive you can play uh as moira uh this game was against a tracer i had beat on king's row and teabagged in the previous game oh kind of felt like a 4v5 is my other sport is just being destroyed by tracer uh questionable they were getting dove pretty hard by by tracer sombra diving one person um is gonna uh, explode them 100 percent. you're just never able to counter the tracer i never and i messed several fade jumps up and i hyper focused that tracer too much he didn't really like me teabagging at king's row um yeah that is 100 percent. well i didn't even <laughs> read that but i'm glad you agree